That's awesome, dude. Perfect. Was that the album uh, Mis Planes Son Amarte? Which means uh, my plan is to love you. Or my plans are to love you. All right. Awesome. That's great. So we're lucky to have him here, guys. A <laughs> little bit about me, because, you know, you guys should know as well. So I am a model, and uh, I'm available for swim swimsuit issues. <laughs> If you laugh, I swear to God, we have an issue now. <laughs> now, I've been a mixer, engineer, and now producer for years. And uh, I've been lucky enough to work with uh, great artists and uh, share the a team where I could win the awards that we all want, like Grammys and Emmys and stuff like that. And for a while now, I've been a part of the school, which is great. It was great. I made not only great friends, I made, m made, m made great great connections with people students that have become not only co-workers teammates but also best friends so it's been good one thing that i think a lot of people don't take advantage of when they're here is the networking mm -hmm. that you can do while you're here not only with students but also with your teachers because those become your peers and your colleagues once you hit the real world all right awesome how many grammys have you won oh, oh right now. <laughs> four Four Grammys, thank you. Wow. I got When we leave here, I got to take out and he can just. <laughs> it's getting too close. Two? <laughs> too close. No, 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 no. Uh, I mean, Madonna, Pharrell, Tyler the Creator. Uh, I just, uh, to me, I'm just lucky and, and actually looking forward to the next project. That's what I'm usually looking forward to. I feel that you can't win today's game with yesterday's touchdowns. Yeah, no, you know what I mean? So, nice. best work still to come. And uh, we're going to get a little bit more into that in a bit. Awesome. 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 All right. So, before we begin, let's go around and share something positive that is going on in our life. Okay. Something that we're proud of. Right. For example, for me, good question. I just recently finished the project. It just dropped on Friday. Mm -hmm. It's one of the things that I've been excited the most in my career, believe it or not, even, even having worked with those great artists that I've had the fortune to work with. And this project is by a graduate, someone that I met here, and she, when she was done, she said, hey, I would like you to work on my project. And it just dropped. Her name is Star Strife, okay? And uh, we're doing great. She just released the album. It's called Blue Spirit. And it's on Spotify and Apple. And I think there's links there on social media in case you, was, you guys want to check it out. But it's one of you, someone that did the course, got out, and is now is making it happen. So I'm really excited about that. Thank you. <laughs> and like I said, it's something that after working with all those people and everything, I've never felt as excited for anything as I do for this. So that's really cool. Besides that, I'm also doing, we're talking about that. Part of the industry where it's taken us. I'm doing a lot of mixing for movies now. Admos is a thing that is not only about music, but it's also, you know, in the movies, that's where it started. And it's all starting to get integrated. So that's me. Now it's time for them. Lid? Yeah. Khalid goes by Lid. Right? Yeah, that's my nickname. So please tell us something about you. What, what is the, re the recent thing that you're excited about? What something you want to share with us? Uh, great question. I feel like I'm excited about like having a good work-life balance. I feel like in this industry, it's very challenging. And I feel like as of late, probably like the past year, I've balanced that out pretty well. So I'm proud of that. It feels good. Oh, that's very cool. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And he came. Yes. Uh, to me, I, I, and I, I think I need to give some context before, like, during the pandemic, uh, things got really slow, very dry. So it was a scary moment. But now I just finished a project that I got to mix a song for a Disney movie. And that's epic. Uh, nice. It's really insane. Really proud. I can show you the it, world. It came, it came back out of like, literally, I was like hopeless. And then I got into one of the coolest projects that I could possibly think. And yeah. That's it. Well, the shut, yeah, the shutdown was real, man. It was. And, oh. yeah. They don't tell me. Like, I couldn't, I don't even know the name. It's going to come up, like, next year, but I don't know the name. name. That's awesome. Yeah, but 
By the way, isn't it like Brazilian, the coolest accent in the world? <laughs> I mean, that in Australia, I think. Croiky, but that's close. Mate, Might. But, but, but yeah, but that's really close. That's really close. That's well, I mean, the sexiness I'm talking about. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Very cool, Enrique. So you don't know the name of the movie? No. Please. What's the name of the song? Uh, Living the Adventure. Wow. Cool. Nice, 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 nice. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So this is a fun question. I like this one, by the way, Shonda. Good job. Good job. All right. If you had to choose which album or song would be the soundtrack soundtrack of your life and why? So don't just throw it out there. Why? Because I got mine. But that's fine. I won't mm -hmm. tell you. Go ahead. Well, off rip, uh, a song I'm listening to a lot is by a fellow Lars alum, Sir. It's called Life's Good. Life's Good. Mm -hmm. And so, I don't know, that just resonates with me. Nice. Yeah. And is it because of the title that that's, I mean, yeah, that's the, the why? Yeah, the title. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Just listen to it while I'm driving and it just makes me feel good. So, yeah, it's a song I'm listening to a lot. Very cool. I think to me it would be one of the classic rock stuff like uh, maybe The Wall by Pink Floyd, the entire album. Oh, wow. It's It goes so deep. It's like I'll, 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 I can hang, hang on the album for the rest of my life. So this is the whole album for you? The whole album. The whole album. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good choice, yeah, man. It's, it's a good choice. I'm going to go so classic deep. too. Yep. For me, me. Is, for me, it's London Calling by The Clash. Oof, yes, that is epic. I know it's just an anthem. It's just I was out in some other life. I was some I don't know, Middle Earth, Game of Thrones, something like that. But that song just calls to me for some reason. And I remember it's actually uh, one of the first songs that I ever remember hearing as a little kid. So I think that's why it was just like it had that it's impact on me. Yeah. But it's a hard one because I have a lot of songs. Also, depending what part of my life I'm going through. I'm a vampire, so I've been like around for 500 and some years old. So, yeah. so, you know, it all depends what phase of, you know what I mean. Awesome, 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 awesome. Finish this sentence, okay? I make a difference as an engineer or I make a difference as be either engineer or producer. How do you make a difference? Let's start with that. I think, like, uh, the people skill is one of the most important things in a room, like, Everyone expect you to know your Pro Tools keys, your hotkeys, your you know, and know to how how to ride a, a compressor and and get the best mic or whatever. But like spending 12 hours with someone in a room, it's like it's a challenge. So if you are able to entertain people so they can get comfortable with themselves to deliver something amazing, I think that's that's definitely the difference. Great, great answer. I want to add something to that. That's great. Yeah, please let him have it. Please. <laughs> Online too. I can hear you. All right. Before you go there, Lid, I want to. I want to add to that 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 is something that is underrated and people don't realize that. That it doesn't matter what your skills are technically, if you don't have that people factor where people are not comfortable with you, right? Like it's just not gonna work. It's not gonna work. They spend more time with you than with their family. Like I tell people that, you know, I, I may be a really competent engineer, mixer, producer, whatever. I may be amazing. They keep coming, I think, because they have a good time with me yeah. and they enjoy spending time with me. Otherwise, and I put them at ease and they feel like they can be themselves. So that's very important. Very important. Good job. Good job. You took my answer. Come on. It's all good. <laughs> Lid, please. Yeah. I mean, I'll have to piggyback on that. I mean, please. I think people's skills are very important. Um, reading the room. Also, like problem solving skills and also keeping your cool under pressure. Like, that's very important. So, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. No, but I mean, we're piggybacking, like you called it, because yeah. it makes sense. Is the things that we find are so common. And a lot of times you don't realize it until you actually are out there. Because now you're focused on just being, okay, I gotta be good at my craft. I gotta be the best at producing. I gotta be the best at engineering, at mixing. And you realize that people factor. It goes back to what I was saying before network. Get to know each other. Create a team. It takes a village. That's awesome. That is awesome. All right. Let me ask you something. And, of course, you were both in the school, but maybe it started before that. How did you get started? <coughs> Why don't you start, Lid? Yeah. Well, I got started more so as a producer, a uh, musician. Um, I started playing keys when I was, like, probably, like, eight or so. 
but I didn't finish school for that. I just started it, and then it helped build the foundation for me. And then um, just started making music, like, around probably, like, 16 or so, like Fruity Loops. Wow. And then just started making beats, and that propelled me to, like, want to learn more about the craft as I got open. Wow. I started, like, self, FLS, huh? self-teaching, and then I went to school and learned, like, a lot cool, more. Cool, cool. Yeah. I get that. A lot of times we go to school to hone in on the craft. And make sure, okay, am I missing out something? Because we already are entrepreneurs even before we come to school. So that makes sense. And he could. I was, uh, I was in a rock band. I used to play guitar. And we were recording our EP. And this guy was using Cubase. And my, my, one of my band's mate, his dad had a, like, a commercial company. And he came to me, he was like, yo, you have a dope voice. Do you want to do some voiceover? I'm like, why not? And when I got there, it was Cubase. And I was like, wait, what? Is this the software the guy is using to record my band? And I'm learning. So it was a weird, like, a combo. I, it really got to start engineering, recording myself with, for voiceover. And from that, I realized, it's like, I can have a life out of this so i bought a small like i took a small like uh, rehearsal studio and i turned into a recording studio and that was it awesome awesome it's great 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 by the way uh he mentioned fruity loops fls i just want to tell you guys because i i remember what it what it was like when i was here and they're no bad dos they're all just tools logic Pro Tools, Able Trash, I mean Ableton. Sorry. That's a joke. That's a joke. That's a joke. Ableton, they're all great. FLS too. So, all right. Awesome. So, tell me now, because you've been through a lot in this career already, right? And you've had to wear many hats, like we do. Sometimes you're the engineer, sometimes you're the producer, sometimes you're even helping out somebody else. What's your specialty now? What do you feel is what you actually do today what is your role and well what do you excel at i feel like for me it's been because there's mixing and there's also tracking engineering i feel like that's been a strong suit of mine P- piggybacking off the people skills like being able to vibe out with people in the room and just have a good time and have a good atmosphere and just tracking and also while you're tracking is to mix but just that process i feel like i've hold in honed in on and done that a lot great so Great. Yeah. That's something, by the way, also that you mentioned that I just want to make sure that for everyone, it used to be and still like we track and then we mix. But now in the industry, you're working towards that goal from the beginning. So even when you're tracking, you're working that project, that song. So it starts to sound more and more like the mix, despite if it's going to go to another mixer or not. OK, so that's that's right. that's on point. And he can. Uh, for me. Uh, it's it's weird because my my best the, the things I think I have uh, the best to share now with clients and people are the things that I do not want to do. <laughs> I do not want to engineer anymore. I really do not want to record anymore. It's crazy. There's a uh, Tears for Fear song, Mad World. He says like uh, the dreams that in which I'm dying are the best I ever had. So. I became a very cool engineer, and I, 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 I wish that for a minute. Like, literally, that was like a plan. Like, I want to be one of the coolest engineers in L.A., and I became, and I don't want to do that anymore. So <laughs> it's like wow. uh, I'm trying hard to move to mixing and produ- produce more than the really just engineering. It's a... Uh, it's, uh, I don't know. It's a weird answer, but uh, I know the things I'm amazing at. I I want to move out of it. You know, it's like it's I wanna, okay. I, I get next. that. It's, it's I want a, yeah. a new challenge and all that. But it, I, I, it. Yeah, it, it's an evolution. Yeah. It's an evolution. A lot of times, you know, one takes you to the other. I never chose to be a mixer. Right, same thing. I never chose to be a model. I'm just you like, had look. <laughs> they I mean, they noticed on. that. They, they said, mind. "Please, they discover me on the <laughs> beach." And like, what? <laughs> no, but seriously, no. <laughs> seriously speaking, yeah, you don't choose that. A lot of times, it uh, just happens, yeah. and it's good to know that that's what you want to do, and it's no, still it, related. It, it literally mixer, happened. Yeah, yeah like uh, when I came to Record Plan, my interview, I told them I want to be a mixer engineer, 
And then I was a runner. And then I became an assistant. And then after that, I got to sit on the chair to engineer someone for, I don't know, $500, $600, which was like half of my paycheck. So I was like, oh, hey, uh-huh, this is fun. So I just stayed there. And people like what I would, I, I kept delivering and they kept calling me back. And uh, it's, uh, I, got, I, got, I got lost. It happened on that sense. Like, you know, it wasn't the plan, but it happened. And I can't be ungrateful saying that it didn't, I didn't have like a fun ride, but I wanna, I wanna move to well, and it's, different chairs. Listen, it's work and they do call it the hot seat for something. Yeah. It's a lot of pressure, a lot of stress. You're the pilot and if anything goes wrong, they're gonna look at you. Oof. It doesn't matter, it could be the system, it could be, I mean, I, I was in a session at Henson when there was an earthquake and they actually were looking at me like if I could do something. Well, what did know. you do? <laughs> I'm like, what? Why did you that's, that's, yeah, that's beyond yeah. me. I'm like, Right, get. I swear I did not fall. I did not hit the ground. It wasn't me. <laughs> right? Damn. But yeah, it's the hot seat. They look it's at the you for, seat. Yeah, for, 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 for to, re to resolve the problem. That's cool. 100%. Well, good answers. Good answers. Let me ask you guys something. Uh, how do you feel that you, when you were at that moment, for example, when you were the engineer and when you were starting to, when you did the productions that, you know, put you ahead and stuff like that, what set you apart from others? Hmm. How do you you know, made your work stand out? I think it's going back to the people skill thing because I've seen a lot of, like, talent, talented engineers kind of lose out on gigs and opportunities because they probably just didn't know how to gel and kind of fit the vibe of the room sometimes. Um, so I feel like for me what's helped me is just me being myself, to be honest, which is kind of corny, but it's true. Like, you are bringing yourself to your work. It's not, unless so. yourself is not a nice person, <laughs> exactly. then you gotta right. be a good actor. So like, yeah, you could be really knowledgeable, but if you're not likable, then it kind of, you shoot yourself in the foot. So. Absolutely, absolutely. And I wanna add to that, sorry, he could before you take my thunder, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, that's great, and it's a good answer, because a lot of times we, we gotta remember we have a job to do, yeah. right? And for example, my mom passed away, and I had a session that I could not get out of three days later. And I couldn't bring that energy into the studio because as sad as I was feeling, it wasn't on them. So I had to be there and be the funny guy they, expect, they expected and the nice guy and everything's okay and everything because I am a professional, I have a job to do. So yeah, that's, that's very true, it's true. And he can stop cheating with the phone. Man. You're not gonna Tinder. find the answers there. <laughs> You're not finding that. No, I think uh, one, of, one thing is be prepared. Like literally, like uh, the day that I got to be a part of the session that led me to a Grammy, uh, it was a mess. Like I drove to the studio thinking I was gonna record vocals and 10 minutes before like getting to the studio, on my way to the studio, I got like an email saying like, oh, we're doing drums, bass, upright bass, ukulele, percussions, piano, and uh, it was a mess. As soon as I got there, the artist was there. And then he looked at the room and he was like, are we ready? Is this Juanes? Yeah. yeah. And he, Juanes has He's like, a nice guy, though. He's a gentleman. Just sweet, yeah, right? that saved my life. But like literally when he asked me like, are we ready? I'll, I point to the room and there was <laughs> nothing. Like I was like, uh, we we're very, waiting. Ready for drums. coffee. Yes. We can, go, we, like we can grab a bike, hang. get to know yeah. each other. Well, that's great. That's it. And so that day, my whole, um, cause usually like when it's a, a big session, we go the day before and we set up and we test and we like test mics and we get sounds we already patched the things everything's working we just come the day after just to have fun and that day the guy was like looking at me and he already had like i don't know 20 plus grammys so i couldn't bullshit that guy you know yeah. so it was literally like you mean Juan is? Oof, yeah yeah it was literally like he was like <laughs> hey, are we good? I'm like, no, we're not. It's like yeah, straight up. Like, By the way, you guys, uh, <laughs> you guys, we were gonna get it right. Yeah, you guys know that Enrique was telling the truth when he said he doesn't want to record anymore. He just wants to mix because that microphone keeps moving away and away from his mouth. <laughs> it's like he keeps dropping it down. Like I don't want to even put a mic up. And that buzz on that <laughs> fucking impact. Easy, easy now. Teen, like easy I don't now. want it. <laughs> it's a family. Oh. It's a family show, Enrique. Say what? <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, oh my God. Drop him in Portuguese. But uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Go, yes. I'm sorry. That's my, my French. 
but uh no but uh, uh oh, as a producer oh, like i think to, to me don't, don't when i got to produce was like uh again like like he said i got to be myself and one of the things that highlight on my productions was the brazilian vibes like the percussions like uh i came to us and i was like uh it took me a minute to understand like you i was in a session with you not a session sorry on a class with you and we got to do a mix and at the end you're like what do you want do you want the f the, the 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 concept or the technical feedbacks That's and right. it took me a minute to understand the concept and after I understood the concept, it took me another minute to allow myself to be myself inside the concept because I try to imitate people and it wasn't working. So as soon as I really got the opportunity to be myself and I allow myself to bring things that I, it was mine, things, things were fun. Yeah. Instead of trying to be the guy that is playing on the top 10, yeah. whatever. That is, I mean, it, it's, I, rem I remember that. And that's something that the, usually the review at the end, the, cri the critique of the song, of the work, those were the two elements because the technical you can learn, right? The artistic, your concept, right? Which is what we were talking about. That's yours. That's what is going to set you apart from another proficient mixer, from another proficient recording engineer, from another producer, is what do you add that is yours, that is your art? And that's what we were talking about back then. That's awesome. You mentioned the percussion. I said, well, I bet you being Brazilian would have an advantage on that because very rich music, by the way, if you guys ever gotten into Brazilian music in percussion and stuff like that. Awesome. Let me ask you guys something. By the way, great, great, great answers. And please hold the questions. And what I mean by that is don't forget them because we want to we wanna hear those. So speak of collaborating with others. What have been the challenges? Because I'm sure you have. Like, has it been something that has been second nature to you? Have you found some adversity having to deal with somebody else's vision? Uh, can you please expand on that? Yeah, I mean, challenging is, is the biggest word because you're collaborating with different people, different personalities, different mindsets. So I, I think one of the first things is to, like, remove the ego out of the room and allow the song to, to or the, you know, the goal to drive the, the boat, so to speak. So with that being said, it's more about trying to listen to everyone's input, but also it, try to orchestrate it to where everyone's playing towards their strengths and you know, not being so criticizing too much where people feel hurt and just, they may not want to express their, uh, you know, what they want to do as much, but just try to find a way to like collaborate and like, oh, you're good on drums, cool, you're great on keys, okay, let's try that idea and just, I think organically, then they'll start to put, you know, put the song together. Great answer. Yeah. Anike. I 100% I agree that the ego is the biggest challenge. And I'll, I'm going to talk about my ego more uh -oh. than anyone We're going to need three days for this one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we all came here to be special, right? Like, this is not a regular career path. Like, we're all aiming for the skies. Like, no one here is trying to get a 9-to-5 job just to go home and pay the bills. We want to make something special. So when I got the chance to share work with people, it took me a minute to get out of my high horse and like allow people to also be themselves instead of like trying to get them to foment my desires, you know? And I made mistakes learning, trying to learn that. But uh, I think like to me, that was it. Like there's definitely other people's ego but that was mine also like th that was my challenge like to hold my you know excitement or anxiety or expectations and and you know all that and allow people to participate and share with them for the long run not for that track not for that project you know like it's not a one hit wonder kind of job here it's like you here for a long time so Allowing people, like like you guys said, like creating team, like having people that you you can, you know, hit up and they'll be there anytime. It takes like you getting your ego apart and allowing these people to help you out. 
So I think that was it. Like my biggest challenge was my ego more than other people's ego. It's pretty pretty humble answer from someone with an ego. I guess it's changed. <laughs> That's awesome. That is on this great answer. Uh, let me ask you guys something. I mean, we already went over this. I mean, this is one on one tips, and I think all this information is very valuable. I wish I would have had a lot of this before I even hit the industry, because unfortunately, I was learning lessons the hard way, right? Not taking it from a mentor always, but oh, yeah, I messed up. I got to learn from that, right? So speaking of tips, what would be your list, right? As a professional in the industry, crucial skills mm -hmm. that you would have. And of course, one of the things we've talked about already is the people skills, right? You got to understand that you're a host. And you, a lot of times, are providing a service, and you got to make sure that everybody's comfortable. So those are the people skills. Yeah. Beyond that, and maybe talk a little bit more of the technical, if you want, mm -hmm. what do you think are some of the top skills that you should have to make it as a producer or an engineer or a mixer? Uh, I think it's important to know, like, vocal chains and knowing, like, what pre goes with a good mic and a compressor and what are the flavors and what genres use certain things. Like, it's, it's about being a student, you know, pun intended, of the game. So... Once you know certain things, then you can achieve a certain sound. So it's good to just kind of like wrap your brain around a lot of things that have been tried and true as far as our industry. Um, so just being able to know what combinations go well together and what are things people use a lot on uh, classic records, I think helps you. For nice. Sure. Nice. I think, I think to me, uh, especially now, what I'm seeing, it will be be humble to where you are. You know, like when I started record playing, I didn't want to be a runner. No one signed up for that job. But when you're there, you got to be a runner. So do the job. And then you become an assistant, which is a shitty job. But no one wants to do that. But you got to do that. What I'm seeing a lot, it's people like uh, not being able to understand the steps. You know, there's a, it's a journey. Like the day that I got hired at record plant, as a runner, I understood that I took a train to success. I don't know if the next stop would be my one or the next or the next one, but I was in this train. And when I understood that, I was humble enough to clean the bathrooms and windex the glasses and clean fuck, clean some, some stuff and, uh, you know, all that, and I, I see a lot of people nowadays when I go to studios as an engineer, the, uh, the, the assistants, they're so hungry to tell people that they are a producer. Bro, no one cares. <laughs> no one really cares. Can you just get me a burrito and a pack of cigarette, please? That's it. And then maybe after that, if you bring back the cigs, I'll ask you, what up? What else do you do in life? Yeah. So I think like, there's a generation of people that don't understand the process right now. And one of the things, uh, I came to the US with a lot of experience. I paid this school with engineering money that I've made in Brazil. So I came back here and I became a student, I was a runner and all this stuff. So it, it hurt me. A lot of people back in my country was like, who are you recording? I'm like, I'm cleaning glass, bro. <laughs> I'm taking trash and I'm like, wrapping up cables, and they're like, oh, you're too good for that. I'm like, chill, yeah. we, we own something here. So I think that, like, uh, this expectation of already go to where you want to be, it's killing a lot of people, because, like, this is not working for a lot of kids. This, it's good to hustle, but there's a fine line before you, like, start, like, making yourself like a, a dumb guy, you know, yeah. in a room. So uh, what I would say to people, like I think one of the best skills is like understand the process. This is a journey and be humble to learn from people, you know, yeah. like it would, it, would, it would add so much to your life. So it sucks. It sucks to, you know, get in my car and go buy people's food and get a parking ticket and that I have to pay, but the things that I've learned when I was allowing myself to do that, you guys have no idea. Yeah. And I'm so proud of it. So it, 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 what I'm seeing nowadays is people that are not capable of like 
being humble to you know learn yeah there's a, that's I mean, it. that's a great answer I want to yeah they're both great answers I want to elaborate on that because that is a, a common mistake and it's we're so hungry I'm going to include myself there for for the for the goal for the finish line that we don't enjoy the process and we don't take advantage of what we can learn in the process so I've I've heard the the the, the runner position and even assistant be described as the blank work because I'm getting food because I'm cleaning the glass because I'm changing the garbage but that's part of the team and yours is as important for the success of that album of that song as the person behind the chair the other thing too is that is the best opportunity to learn well, I learned more as an assistant than I did when I was actually engineering because when I'm engineering I don't get paid to experiment so I got to deliver. I got to go ahead. Okay, I have a certain amount of time. The session's going to be done. There, it's done. But I don't get to learn new techniques. But if you're an assistant, it's not on you. You sit back and, yeah, he can sit engineering. I sit back and I'm like, oh, wow, cool. I just learned something. Or, oh, yeah, that didn't work. <laughs> I'm not doing that again. And it's not, yeah, they're not going to like that one, but it's not my behind. I'm cool, right? So enjoy that process. And the other thing I was going to tell you is about going back to what Lid said before is make sure you're prepared because opportunities will come knocking and you got to be prepared and, and don't try to fake it because they'll know. They'll know. Sometimes you may get away with it, but you'll know. So be prepared. Like when I was a, an assistant, when I was a runner, I always envisioned what would happen if right now they said, engineer is not making it. He's at Coachella. Can you got you ready? And that's how it started for me. Mm -hmm. And I was ready. And I'm sure a lot of us, not only the ones here, but that's been what's happened. Opportunity came knocking, and you had to be ready to go. Right. Awesome. Great answer, guys. Great answers. I was going to say something also I forgot, and, and I want the enthusiasm on those clapping. Don't, don't get tired of me. <laughs> right? Especially after I speak. That's going to be the loudest one. No. I was going to say was, careful with the word producer. Because now... Is being used too 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 lightly. Everybody just everybody's a producer. Everybody's a producer. And what you don't understand, I don't I'm not trying to knock you down, right? If you love that pedestal, go for it. But understand you might be closing doors for yourself. Okay? And understand that for example, if you're in the room, right, and I don't know what you've done, but if you're in the room with Pharrell, Andrew Watts, Quincy Jones, you're all producers. Yeah? You're all, you're all, yeah, I'm, I'm right there with them. I'm the same. And what might happen is those people may be looking for someone to be part of their team. But if you come in with that calling card of I'm a producer, then you're closing those doors. Because they're like, oh, you do what I do. Oh, okay. It's cool. Then, yeah, well, I'll see you. Right. I'm good. To do yeah, I'm good. Work. It's fine. <laughs> you're like, oh, but I wanted to work with you. Oh, but now I'm like, oh, because I'm a producer. So... Always talk about it. It's okay to say, well, you know, I'm working towards becoming this, and these are my skills and stuff like that. Don't worry about the title. The title will be given to you by life and success. It's not something you give yourself. Yeah. All right? So just think about that. Yeah. There you go, Aaron. There you go. Nice. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's talk about insights into your creative process. Okay? When it comes time to producing a song or mixing a song, What's your approach? What motivates you? What triggers that spark that you go like, okay, this is the path? Tell me about that. I think it comes from trying to find inspiration because I feel like that's what sparks it for me and I'm sure for most people, uh, whether that's traveling or just being around different people, even conversations, you know? Just trying to find that inspiration and then like trying to get the tools that help get that inspiration out of your head and into like a tangible form. So I would say, try to be inspired and try to just dig deep and find whatever you know you want to come out bring it out somehow for me i like to start on the keys um and just kind of get a riff going or just listening to music to be inspired i mean everyone bars from something so just listening to old records i have a vinyl collection and right. i'll just go dig ran randomly just blindly just like i like to sample as well i know that's you know a type of production but be careful because if you sample the wrong thing, then they're gonna charge you a lot of money for it. <laughs> yeah, so there's a but, right way of doing I mean, it, and there's a right way and the wrong way. Yeah, yeah, you know the the best way 
if you are inspired is to hire session musicians and then they'll get you close to that same vibe so right. there are different ways and tools to achieve a sound nowadays that i think are easier i mean everyone knows about splice and you know yeah, using packs and whatnot which is fine but it's like a race to whoever gets the song out because like i've heard s samples that have been used like 20 million times you yeah know? of course so of course it's like cool to have the sample but then like all right let me get my musician homies and have them listen and interpolate certain sounds and then of course. build it organically. You also so. free up the masters that way. For sure. You know, so. to clear that. Yeah, that's... Business that's class. class, business class. There you go. Uh, to me, uh, the insights come from listening to music 100% and going out. Like, I heard one day that music is about life. And there's no chance of you making a great song locking inside your bedroom. You gotta see people, you gotta feel people, you gotta vibe with people, you gotta share emotions and feelings and frustrations and expectations. So uh, anytime that I have a new project, to me, it starts with like a lot of listening. And I'll go to that genre and try to like dive in and see what can I get from there. And even like when I try to imitate, when I try to copy stuff, things will still come out as me, you know. I'm not gonna be able to reproduce Pharrell. If I try to get a Pharrell track, at the end it's gonna be like, ah, that's cool, but it's not Pharrell, it's me. So having reference, I think it's one of the coolest thing. We get lost, like, you know, like it's easy to make something at home and think it's cool, but if you compare it to something else, now you have reference. Yeah. So, uh, there's something that I just learned that I'd love to share with you guys. It's called Radio with Five O's. Radio with Five O's. So it's Radio. Yeah, exactly. Not Radio with Five O's. Radio. Radio. Okay, got it. That's a platform that has like a radio by countries and by decades. So, bro, if you click on 70s Ghana, it's the best sound ever. Like so many grooves, so many, it's just like the coolest thing. I don't go to like top 50 Spotify anymore. And Radio. I'm gonna gonna check it out as soon as I can. <laughs> so yeah, get inspiration from different source. <laughs> don't go to Splice. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Kind of it. Let, me, let me ask you guys something, speaking of this, because you both have, you know, dealt with it. How do you find inspiration? How do you get around a horrible song? when you gotta mix it or work on it, or a challenging artist that is like, oh my God, but this dude can't sing, or this girl can't sing, oh my God, and you have to still do your job. Yeah. yeah, yeah, what do you, yeah. We call it uh, polishing the turd, but uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, without naming names, I mean, it's just, it's a challenge. That's what the people skills come into, and then you find the good in it, you know? Like, everything, there's a, there's a nugget or grain of good in it, and your job is to like, carve out all the mess and find that good and like highlight it somehow. That could be a vocal performance, it could be some instrumentation. Just the goal is to open your ears and like open your mind and not get caught up in like whatever is stressing you out or the negative about it. You just gotta be positive and push through. I think you'll find a way to make the record stand out. Absolutely. No, 100% agree. Like anything has at least two sides so it's up to you to find what to highlight i guess like that's our job to emphasize or to to enhance or to give attention to the things that are good on the track so even if the vocal is bad like maybe the instrumental deserves some love more than and maybe turn down the vocals and have it more like blended with the track but um uh, it, that's it some days like it feels like work is like damn <laughs> i took the wrong turn here yeah. i didn't want to do this why am, why did i say yes to this gig that's great but uh literally at the end like i i uh, i think it's up to us and we have the creative inputs like when you're producing or mixing like you still have chance of enhancing or manipulating that making it better that, yeah to make it better yeah so if Absolutely. i can maybe I'm not that cool as I thought I was. So yeah. we always keep trying, yeah. That's, that's a great answer, man, great answer. 
Great tips, too, because, by the way, I mean, I wish I would have known that. Uh, at one point, my inspiration was I brought my bills and just put them on the console. Oh, that too, yeah. <laughs> to remind myself, why am I, why, why am I here? Okay, I got it, yeah. Yes. Got to pay the phone, got to pay that, you know, though, for real. But no, seriously speaking, uh, I learned to fall in love with sound. And the other thing I learned was that I am not the master of what's good. And what to me may be trash, to somebody else may be amazing. Right, one of the, I don't like to mention names, stuff like that. I did it for this when somebody asked me, because I, you know. But one of the biggest songs I ever mixed, I thought it was crap when I got it. And I was like, what? And I still did my job. And it went on to be huge. And I'm like, what? All right. Okay, well, I'm like, okay. Love it. Thank God I still did my job, because I'm a professional. So remember that. Awesome. That's great, guys. Round of applause for everyone, please. What do you normally find as a challenge in the studio? And you can go technical with this. And how do you go about resolving it? Like, you can tell us, because, I mean, that can be a plethora of things. Tell us about something that you remember. Like, ah, that was a, like, you already mentioned the Juanes thing, not being in the studio, not being ready. But what do you feel that, like, okay, that one was something that could have really been tragic, but we got around it? I mean, there's always going to be the the battle of the gear. You know, technical stuff is always going to happen. It's more about how you deal with it, um, finding creative workarounds. Um, also, I remember having a session where the assistant was not there on time, and I was there first. And so, like, this was almost like, oh, this is doomed from the start. Like, yeah. I'm here before you are, and now I have to trust you to help me. And then, like, I just end up kind of doing a lot of stuff myself. So I think being prepared is is a big part in – you know, when you have an assistant, it's nice. I used to be an assistant, of course, like we all were. I started as a runner, but I was, like, excited and ready to be there, you know. So having someone that's not that excited to be there, you're like, well, you're not adding value. Like, I might as well do this myself. Cause yeah. If you don't want to be here, then I don't want you to be here either, you know. Yeah. So it's just it's, it's just team. like basics. Yeah, it's like it's a team. So people that yeah. are there early, that, that show up, that are excited, that want to be there and contribute, like, it's going to kind of tend to make the session go a lot smoother than someone who's like late and just uninterested, you know, for real. So. Totally. I think on the technical side, absolutely. Like I've been getting a uh, few encounters with assistants. They're not, they don't want to be there. They want to be producers. You know, they don't want to be engineers at all. Like I've seen people assisting me that they didn't have, the notion what was like the types of microphone a condenser a piezo mic a dynamic like the guy literally didn't know that and i'm like what are you doing here bro and on those days you got to do it yourself and just be prepared don't bring that frustration to the room to the artist and that's it it's like whatever was supposed to be if it's not it's up to you to make it happen like literally like I, I will never tell a client or an artist that we are going through something because the assistant that's not gonna help me it's not gonna help <laughs> the session so you don't bring these things to anyone you fix it so I think like one of the biggest challenges nowadays is that people they are not prepared and they they just like make your day worse but if you know, you're cool. It's okay. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I think one thing we got to I'm going to piggyback on that is that at the end of the day, like I was saying before, you are the pilot. People are looking at you. You passing the buck or, you know, blaming the person that is where they are working with you is not going to make you look any better. No. Right? So that's something you can discuss with that person, with the studio, with the manager, whoever put them in, in, in that place for you. But you have After to respond, decision. right? But you have to respond to the artist, to the person you're working with, and you have to handle it. You have to manage it. Because I'm sure when Lid had that experience with the student, and the assistant wasn't there on time, he was already ready to step up and do whatever needed to be done because yeah. the show must go on. So that's something that, you know, always keep in mind. Uh, let me ask you something, guys. Uh, Software-wise, do you have something that you love that you consider like a like a secret weapon, part of your arsenal, yeah. like radio. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've been loving uh, Pro Q3, uh, so oh, yeah. EQ. I think oh, it's yeah. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> the team. Uh, it's not fabulous. It's yeah. Fab Filter. Um, 
there's a couple other things. I mean, I started using Slate stuff. That ha they have a nice little suite. I mean, it's a little expensive. You pay monthly, but they have some nice toys. You know, I like their um, reverbs. Um, I like Valhalla reverb. I mean, I oh, can yeah. go on and on. I mean, there's Those there's Vikings a lot. Know what yeah, they're doing. exactly. <laughs> the Swedish. Um, what else? Um, I mean, Melodyne is a powerful tool. I mean, I use Auto Tune a lot too. Obviously, I'm sure everyone cool. does in modern music. Can you leave some for me? But yeah, let me. <laughs> it's like, dude, you said everything. Yeah, exactly. You said All everything. Ditto. 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 <laughs> exactly. Uh, I just fell in love with some uh, reverbs from uh, native instruments. Rom, A R A U M. That thing is special. Uh, there's uh, some RC like emulations from the lexicons by them too. Pro Q, Auto Tune, Melodyne. I'm curious about the new Pro Tools integration with Melodyne. I haven't tested that. Yeah, have haven't you tried that? I have. Is yeah. it cool? Yeah, too much work. I didn't <laughs> sign up for that. All right, all right. I mean, it's not. Right, it makes right. it easier, but at the same time, it's like uh, I, need, I need to record then Melodyne, the integration right. thing. Uh, my My assistant is great. He actually records. Because now he's like my engineer when I produce, right? And he records and mellow dance at the same time. Wow. And my brain is breaking. <laughs> I know. Like I'm it's like, watching wait, and chill. it's giving me a headache. I'm uh -huh. like, dude, I don't, I don't, even, I don't even watch. I, just, I keep my eye on the artist. But yeah, but integration is great. I'm just saying. It's, it's too but, much. Uh, but, uh, I, but one thing I've learned, honestly, it's, and I don't know if someone ever said that. I don't know if it's my saying, but a tool won't make a fool. So you can buy a brick assay. You can buy U47, ATCs, whatever. If you don't know how to use, it's worse than having a cheap mic. Yeah. If you have the things that you know, just go for it. It's what like is what is it cheap. yours? You said the tool doesn't what? Make a fool. Doesn't make a fool. The tool yeah. can make a fool. Nah, the fool is here to be a fool. <laughs> <laughs> the one I've been using for With a the while. Rich kid. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one it. I, the one I've been using for a while is not the hammer, it's the carpenter. Yep. So, you know, it's not the tools. The tool is just a tool. A hundred percent. Like, I've spent a lot of money on amazing gear and helped, but my first few mixes on this amazing gear sounded like my shitty mix. So it wasn't the gear. It was me. So. Crappy mix. Yeah, Crappy exactly. mix. Yeah. Crappy, Crappy mix. mix. Yeah. So I got to go back to the thing between the chair and the computer, which was me. It's like, am I listening right? Is the acoustic environment correct am i like understanding what the artists want if i get that it doesn't matter the speaker the gear the plugging i've seen people making amazing sound with uh the pro tools basic plugins like literally oh, those, like, are, those are fire fire they are I mean, they get you out of a jam all the time you're like oh this is do i have something here pro tools okay what do we, yeah. what do you have but yeah Awesome, awesome. Uh, talk to me about mentorships. Mm. Are you mentoring someone? Were you mentored by someone? How did that affect you? Did it, did it create that platform that you were looking for to propel you in your career? Tell me a little bit about that. I mean, personally, I didn't have a mentor per se, but I definitely learned a lot from different people I got to work with, uh, starting from when I was a runner. Uh, I started out as a runner at Interscope uh, during the time they were doing like Pimp a Butterfly all the way through Damned and control on a bunch of albums that came out around that time and through that you know working with uh matt schaefer james hunt these are cats that you know cool. went on to get grammys with them and just little different tips and tricks that they would show me like has helped me but it wasn't like a mentorship for long it was just i was at the right place at the right time and able to learn from the dopeness that was around me you know? nice very and nice so i think it's about you don't necessarily always need a mentor because, uh, you know, Pensado's Place and the Internet and YouTube, there's a lot of great information out yeah. there. I think it's more about, like, you know, experimenting, getting comfortable with the tools that we all use and just trying it out for yourself. Yeah. You know? It's so a lot of a million ways to do all, things. Yeah. It's also misinformation. So. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, that's so, for sure, for sure. So you Thank don't you have a mentor, but I think you could just learn from anyone. Honestly. Great, great answer. And he can't. I uh, had, excluding me, by the way. I know I'm top right, of your list. Right, fine. But yeah, excluding well, me, please. I mean, including him, <laughs> all my mentors were not cool people to me. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, I always, like, I didn't get it. Like, uh, I start recording in back in Brazil, and this guy, uh, I think one of the first things I did was, like, replacing Drumagog samples. Like, Drumagog is a plug-in to treat drums. 
and often sees the wrong like transients and put kicks <laughs> everywhere. So we were doing this like a uh, band and it was like a prog metal band. So it's like 700 kicks a song and I had to edit that. And this guy was teaching me. He was the one helping me out. And it was so brutal. I don't know, like I had two mentors in my life, if, three with Joe. And I, I always like, these people always treat me like with the most like, uh, I don't know, it was never easy. It was always like they were pushing me hard. And during the whole thing, I hate it. And at the end, I was like, I was so proud of it. I was so thankful for them not giving me like silly answers. Like usually, like here I had an amazing mentor, which is Josh Goodwin. We spent like two years together uh, doing the Bieber stuff. When he became a mixer, I was his first uh, assistant. And I would go to Josh and like, he would be mixing and he would do something cool. I was like, yo, what did you do? He was like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, yo, come on, bro, please tell me. And now he goes on Twitch and tell kids like, oh, I did this and I did that. I'm like, why are you nice to all these people? <laughs> and to me, it was always like, yo, bro, you figured it out. You're supposed to be looking at it. Like, I'm not going to come back and tell you this story. I'm like, me. Yes. But uh, yeah, that made me who I am. So. Yeah. The mentorship was like really cool when I found these people that were like, all right, you really want to do this? Let's see. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. remember something. A mentor is not necessarily someone that tells you what you want to hear. It's what no. you need to hear. It's what you need that. to hear. Yeah. And that's my, I've had, I've had, you know, people that have mentored assistants, stuff like that, sit there with mixes. And then they ask me the same thing. What'd you do? And I was like, I just did like 20 things in the last 20 seconds. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, were you not paying attention? Yeah. Like, and when you see something, write it down. And yeah. then tell me, ask me afterwards, because right now you're interrupting my flow. Yeah, mode, yeah. So I get Josh. I get yeah, Josh. 100%. But yeah, mentors can can influence you, affect you in many ways. And sometimes uh, the biggest mentor, mentor is life, is the experience that you're getting. So great answer, guys. Great answers. Uh, let's start this, or let's, let's finish this segment, right, with something similar to how we started it. Finish this sentence. I am... An artist, producer, mixer, engineer that fill in the blank. That wants to change the world with music. I mean, it's corny, but you know, music is about emotions, it's about feelings, it's the soundtrack to people's lives. And, you know, I hope to contribute to that, you know, in some way, shape, or form. So I just want to make people feel something. Not corny. Yeah. Not corny. That's okay. Uh, no, uh, I have to agree. Music is my religion. And by religion, I mean uh, uh, what connects me to myself. So uh, I take music really serious. Sometimes that's a problem to me. Like if we're in a project and you're not giving 100% of yourself, I'm out. Z z even if I'm getting paid, I'm out. Literally, it's like, this is so important because it touched people. It will touch people in a hundred years from now on. So if you came here looking for the side effects of making a cool track, I'm out. So we, shall, we shall do the track first, and then people will resonate with that, and then money will come, the fame will come, and the girls, whatever you're looking for. Right. Those are consequences of like really putting all of it in a track that's a great answer so guys if you don't i'm out that's great i want to remind you guys something those of you watching here and at home remember why you started in this path and i believe that for 99.9 percent .9 of you was the love for music that's what drove you through this yeah we want success we want to make a great living but we chose this path because of our love for music so remember that in your whole journey that's great one last one of that type. Thought you were off the hook. No. Okay. I empower my peers, my colleagues, by? Uh, inspiring, living in my truth. You know, I hope that I could represent people that look like me, that came from where I came from, you know, that, you know, have the opportunity to be great at something they love to do. So that's what I hope for. That's great. Aaron, please lead it. To me, on, it's like uh, sharing my truth with uh, people that are starting. 
uh, when I go to Record Plant, uh, Record Plant became my house. I'm, I came to LA in 2010. I spent more time inside Record Plant than any of the house I have rented in LA. So that place is special to me. So when I go back there and I see the runners, the assistants, like I'm 100% honest with them as far as like, what do you want? And he's my version of what I think will lead you to that as fast as you can. And then like uh, it's, and a lot of it, it's like a recycling my mistakes to tell these people. And I think like I empower my friends doing that like honestly sharing what if learn in the industry because you know like you said like there's a lot of misinformation out there like you see a podcast or you see like some stuff people are like you know praising themselves more yeah. than really sharing the truth and the then, screen will hold anything yeah <laughs> I'd, like to, I'd like to edit a lot of stuff out too like really important part parts for like absolutely the, uh, yeah. production process is like for me it seems like yeah, one of the great things about school and mentors is that they give you the information to be able to, you know, go through the weed out the stuff that is not, not that's not accurate. That's not it. Oh yeah, this is something I can take from this. That's a good, good point. Good point. Well, man, you guys are bringing it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna go to uh, Q and A. Jaim, I've not forgotten about you, my brother. Hope you didn't forget that question. Okay, good. But before that, I want to tell you guys or ask you guys, can you please tell them, tell, tell them in our audience uh, where they can find you, social media, where are you, what's the deal? Come on, man. Yeah, sure. I mean, I have Instagram, Brooklyn, L-I-D, one word, and uh, same for Twitter. And uh, yeah, you can find me on there. That's awesome. Follow, DM, I'm available. Uh, I have Instagram, and uh, it's my phonetic... Uh, the, the phonetic spelling of oh, my name. Wow. So it's N hyphen or underscore whatever. H E E hyphen again K. And uh, if you can understand that, I'll be there. And he can. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, mine is uh, Joel Numa, my name on uh, Instagram or in TikTok. It's because I do my videos, okay. dancing, and all that stuff. Okay. Is the mix that the the mix addict. The Mix Addict. Mix Addict is my moniker. So The Mix Addict, that is on on TikTok. Right. And I forgot the others. Twitter is too much arguing, so I'm not <laughs> there anymore. <laughs> too much arguing. It's all good. All right, guys. Uh, we're going to go to questions. I'm going to start with the people that are here, and then hopefully we have some social media questions that have, that have come in. Sean is in charge of that. Jaheem, start with you. Can you repeat that, please? Oh, and I I'll hand the just mic hand yeah. the microphone. Yeah. yeah. That's great, but it was a great point. Please, please ask it again. Okay, so if you guys was to take a, a total rewind, just like to start all the way over, all the accomplishments down the drain, and to just go all the way back to where we are right now, sitting down, um, what would you say that you have, like mentality wise, confidence wise, knowledge wise? that would just separate you guys from the competition of other people trying to make it as producers in the industry. Yeah. Uh, for me, I would definitely utilize these amazing studios a lot more. The labs, I, I feel like is a, it's a cheat code that almost makes it worth it. Being, being in this room, all the different rooms, using the gear all the time, getting really familiar with it. I think it's something you may take for granted as a student, but like outside of here, then this isn't a resource that you have to your availability. So I would use the labs a lot more. I would collaborate a lot more with people I'm in class with and, you know, classmates. Cause like I said, I went to school here with Sir. Like, you know, obviously he became who he became, but he was always who he was, you know, but 
there was a lot of dope people that were in these same rooms and these same you know seats um and i would just ask more questions and be more curious you know like it's like the more you learn the more you earn so for me it's like just arm yourself with knowledge and and for me i'm a visual learner so hands-on is the way i like to learn so i would just be in the lab a lot more personally okay no absolutely it's a powerful thing like i aim a lot of you guys that get to do your first recording on a Neve on an SSL. It's like my first recording was in a. Uh, I don't say it. Don't say it. No, don't say it. Don't say it. They're all just tools. Don't yeah, say it. Just but yeah. tools. Yeah. But uh, understanding this, because I think one of the coolest things is like training your ears. Like if you know what a good sound is, you can replicate that when you go home on your headphones or speakers and all that. But I think the crucial point to me, if I have to rewind my career, you guys have no idea of the power of networking. And I remember when I was a student, I was, I was career development class. I was like, bro, what? These people are telling me to take a shower before I interview. It's like, come on, let me go. But um, what I did in my career that I would change now, uh, I, I focus more on the artists. Like, so I was friends with the artists. I, I was important to them, and I didn't care much about A&Rs, managers, and label people. Those are the people who pay my check. Mm -hmm. And when, when the artist goes on tour, blank, I'm out. When the artist decides that he doesn't want to make music anymore, I'm out, gone, done. And one 100% thing that I, I would love you guys to like hold on is that you should network with A&Rs, managers, and label people. It's really cool to have an artist like loving you. It's like calling you a friend and all that. That doesn't give you any job. Usually artists will get jealous if you get another gig. So... In a long-term run, the network should be focused on A&Rs, managers, and label people. Right. Period. Great. Great answer. Right at that. Yeah, yeah. I'm going gonna, gonna to combine the two because it's very important, and I think it's completely right. So going to your question, Jaime, as far as uh, that, would, that would give you confidence, understand the, and trust the process. That's something that a lot of times we don't quite understand and we don't quite trust it. When I was starting out, I mixed like a musician. How does a musician mix? Equality, democracy. <laughs> everyone is special. Everything was the same, everyone's special. So, uh, you know, they're like, no, it's not there yet. I'm like, what do you mean? I can hear everything. He's like, not there yet. And you need to understand that it's a monarchy. And you would say the vocal is king, and then you have the chord, which are the main ones, and then the supporting cast, like a movie. And at the same time, understand that you're not supposed to get it right away. And that's why you may not be ready, even though you think you are, to be the mixer, to be the man. Take the time to learn it because it will click in. All these classes, all, all this networking, all these things that you keep learning, they're going somewhere. And at some point, it's going to make sense. It's like Neo seeing the Matrix. Like, oh, okay, cool. Practice. Like Lit said, practice, practice, practice. We're talking about practice. We're talking about practice, not a game. We're talking about practice. Super important. And a tool I will give you that he brought up before, and it was the one thing. I taught the mixing class, and then I taught, I taught also the advanced mixing class. And if they would ask me, and I would tell them to make it a point, the one thing for you to remember, you can forget everything else. Forget mid-side process, processing. Forget parallel compression. Forget side chaining. Forget all that. The most important thing to learn is always use a reference song. Have something that will show you, okay, that's the finish line. Because even if you forget how to do things, you can go, one of these things is just like the other. I'm done. It's great. It's good. Otherwise, so use that reference track as to your question, like what is something that you can do now that will set you apart from most people? Because a lot of people don't, believe it or not. They'll think, oh, it's great. Why? Because I love it. What? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Another question, guys? Anyone here? Austin! What's going on, man? Um, I was just curious about, like, 
when you're starting as like a runner or an assistant um what are like the important like actions to take to like move forward more like efficiently or you know to get where you want to go quicker i would say paying attention to details you know like if a certain artist or producer likes a certain his coffee made a certain way or you know it, it'll be petty like getting an order wrong but then like getting it right helps build the trust so that they ensure you to do other things so it's like each thing leads to the next so i'll say be very detail orientated and just have a good positive attitude like like he said you don't want to bring bad vibes to the session or to the studio regardless of life like we, we all live in life and you know has its ups and downs but when you're at that place to work like try to bring your best self as best as you can because I, I would say more opportunities come from people that have good positive attitudes in those situations than people who are super knowledgeable so absolutely great answer great answer awesome somebody else any other questions here uh, no Rika, you all you want to say something too okay i thought we were done i'm just kidding go ahead yeah, i mean i think like uh do the extra work people are paying you to do this and you do this that's what people expect you to do do you want to show off do a little bit above the this so in my case at record plan i was on night shift my shift would start midnight for a long time and sometimes like it, we will stay up until whatever to the next morning or if the last session ends like 2 3 a.m we wrap it up clean the studio and go home and on those days that the sessions would end like 4 or 5 a.m i'll clean the studio do everything i had to do and i had slept the whole day i was ready to stay the whole night up so i'll stay out of the clock i'll clock myself out and I'll organize the cable room. I'll organize the microphones. I'll organize something, something. When the morning people came and they're like, oh, well, you're still here? I'm like, yeah. It's just like, you know, I was up. Anyway, I just cleaned this, organized that and all this stuff. I'm out. I'm going home. And I kill them with kindness. These people look at me like, this guy loves this place. So let's give him whatever he wants. So if you just do what people require you, you're a regular person. That's yeah. nothing special there. So that's, try to show people that you're really yeah. passionate about. Oh, that's great. And then you move. You, you that is great. Great right answers. Yeah. Great answers, guys. I want to remind you of something. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. And everyone. I want to remind you guys of something. No one ever got ahead by just doing what they were supposed to do. Yeah. Think about that. No one ever got ahead by just doing what they're supposed to do. You want it? Go get it. Go the extra mile. Put, an e put effort into it. Like, and I'm talking about more than just your job. That will just keep you in the same place. All right, that's great. Okay, now for real. Anybody else? Shonda, let's do it. Yeah, please, let's do it. Can this mic reach back there? Because that one, that one's probably closer. Somebody said, uh-oh. She came prepared. <laughs> All right, okay. So we have a question from Mark Ellis. Um, I believe it's online music production. So his question is, when you get an inspiration, how do you choose the best genre to produce it in? Or do you specialize in just one genre? You can keep it. Keep the mic. We'll use this one. Um, the question is, when I get inspiration, how do I choose what genre? Mm -hmm. Or uh, do, you, do you specialize in just one genre? Or how do you choose mm. the best genre to produce it in? Let me add to that. Yeah. This, or, or, and you have an, if you have an idea that goes away from that, what you us usually do, yeah. do you just discard it or do you say, no, let me see what this takes you? No, I mean, I, I like all types of genres. So for me personally, like, I try my hand at almost anything except for maybe country or something like that. But um, no because no offense get, to it. It's just, yeah, what I'm used to. Um, I don't know, for like getting inspiration, like, it's, it's just different. It's, just, it's different. Like, I know what I'm good at, you know, I know what my bag is. So, like, I'll play to my strengths a lot of the times, but then I step out of my comfort zone to see where it could land me. I could not maybe like the end product, but at least I'll attempt it. So for me, I wouldn't limit myself, you know, do whatever you love and imitate whatever you are inspired by. So I would say try anything. Like 
you know, whether it's me trying to do some samba or, you know, trying to do some house music or, you know, jazz. Like, it, for me, the only limitation is the ones you kind of place upon yourself. But then it's about getting people that are experts. Like, hey, I have a really dope guitar player. He could do this. And, you know, being friends with musicians, I think, helps for a producer. So, yeah. Uh, I think, like, especially now, there's, like, this very strong fusion going on. Like... Uh, uh, it's it's really hard. Maybe I don't know. Twenty, thirty years ago was easier for people to categorize music, but now there's this insane fusion, this blend of like reggaeton, Spanish culture, like uh, trap music, urban music, and pop music. Like that, honestly, like those lines, they don't exist anymore. Just make good music. And honestly, like a great song works as a remix on any other genre. It's like if you have like a great song, like there's a band called Easy Star All Stars. They they revisit albums. They did Michael Jackson, Beatles, and Radiohead reggae version, and it's epic. It's because the melody was there and the song was there. So I don't think like uh, you should you should limit yourself on that one. Just make great songs. Great answer. Great answer. We have one more. Can I please, ask one more? Please okay. go ahead. From Sebastian, who is also in music production. Sebastian asks, where would you recommend to find an internship for a studio when starting out? What, what does he want to do? Ooh. Sebastian, I don't know if I can get to it fast enough, Sebastian but... Sebastian wants to be a producer, and he will go to record playing. If he's hmm. an engineer, it's the wrong place. Okay, say that one more time. Uh, it depends where you want to do. Like, if you want to be a producer and you're eager to be a producer and start making beats and showing people that, if you go to a recording studio, you might be a frustration, you know, because people are expecting you to wrap it up cables and record more than really make anything. So on the production side, it would be amazing to try to find a producer and see if you can become his assistant, help with like the basic stuff and learn from them. The The recording studio will be a long run. If you're patient, you shall harvest that thing. Like to me, like I was engineer for this artist for two, three years until the day that he asked me if I knew how to make music. And then from that, I became a producer. So I don't know if really being a producer is your urgency, I'll skip the recording studios because you're gonna stay two years like cleaning and like wrapping up cables, recording new playlists, recording new playlists, keep that, delete that. I don't know, depends what, what you want. If you like, if you understand the process and you allow yourself to, to build something, a recording studio can be cool, but it's gonna be a long run. It's gonna be three, four, five years until someone asks you, what else do you do besides cleaning the bathrooms but uh, I don't know as far as internship I'll try to find someone that you really passionate that you resonate with their art and hit them up and see like yo can I help you out um, I'm available and I would love to learn from it very cool, cool. I have one last can I do one more Joel yes but I got I want to add oh, go to ahead. that please go ahead you guys have the advantage of career development. It's something that <laughs> he didn't want to be there because they told him to take a shower. But no, that's like, <laughs> you said it. You said, what? I got to take yeah, a shower what? before that? What? Uh -uh. So you have that advantage. And that is huge. These people work very hard at putting you in touch with the right place. I got a job at record plan from career development. Yes. And, and beyond that, do your research, like he was saying. Look at the work that you appreciate, that you love, that you, that impresses you. Look, I mean, we used to say, look behind the cover. Nowadays, look at the credits. Yeah. Find out where was it done. Who did it? Contact these people respectfully. Contact these people. Try to find them on the internet. Send them a letter. If it's a studio, send them a letter, right, saying, hi, I admire your work. You've been a mentor of mine from afar because I followed your work in this movie. You're the soundtrack in this movie, what you did in this record, in this production, and it will be my pleasure 
to be an asset to you. And you'd be surprised how well they respond to that. Because I've taken a lot of people that have contacted me like that, and I'm like, wow, okay, at least I'll, come, I'll, I'll see what you have to say and agree to meet you. And, and, and some of them have worked out really well. So don't be afraid to knock those doors, or knock on those doors, rather, right? And I'm talking about email and always respectful. And remember something, and I shouldn't be saying this, but I'm going to say it anyways. That's right, Scout. I'm going to say it. <laughs> difference between persistence and harassment is the outcome. So a lot of times it is. You got to, you know, squeaky wheel gets the oil. As long as you're respectful, keep at it. Because if these people are busy, a lot of them, it took me a while to get back to them. So remember that. All right. Shonda, please. Okay. And this will be our last question from YouTube. So Arturo, if you're watching, I'm going to ask one of your questions. So Arturo Lucius Sr. is in media communications. So in a different program, but interested um, in music and audio. So he says, is there a standardized checklist that you find helpful and or still use today, if that's applicable? It, it, I mean, I'm going to start with that. I'm going to give the mic to them. But that checklist can be a big checklist. And it's what we've been covering today, starting with the people skills, starting with being prepared. I mean, continuing with being prepared, being there on time, being ready to go when opportunity knocks, you know, and knowing the gear, uh, staying focused, not being too quick to jump over a seat because I don't want to assist. I don't want to intern. I want to be the man already. So that, that's what I would add to that. But I want to hear from Lid and, and Enrique. Yeah, I mean, a checklist, like what Joe was saying, is just be very prepared. Know that you don't necessarily always know what you're getting into, but the more that you can prepare yourself and just knowing the gear, knowing, you know, what kind of uh, microphones they have available and just being very, like, prepared is the best thing I would say. There's no actual checklist, though. I think... If anything, there's a, a, a checklist for post sessions, you know, whether it's like sending stems or whether it's like how you organize and label your session and in case someone else is mixing in it. Like I would say there are too many things that would be on one list, but I think each engineer develops his own style and kind of like professional checklist of things to have done prior and then post session that just probably a lot of it is just cleaning house, organizing, labeling, and you know, knowing who to email <laughs> what to. I think I'll start my checklist asking yourself if you're happy because this is music, you know. It's not a regular job that you could just stamp stuff and get done and go back home. Like, do you find yourself – because another thing that people get lost is, like, we are not work. Like, work is a part of your life. And L.A., the music industry, Hollywood, all that – sometimes comes very aggressive on the sense of like i gotta put the work i gotta hustle i gotta do all that and at the end sometimes i see a lot of people burn out burning up and when you get there there's no inspiration there's no radio that will bring you like excitement to anything there's no plugins there's no money there's no fee there's no credits that will bring you back to this so one thing that it's really easy to 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 fall and it's like getting lost here and just like forgetting about having a life so my my i'll put that on on the top of the checklist whatever is the rest it's a long checklist but like keep yourself entertained and human and work is work when you die people won't give a fuck won't give anything about grammys or <laughs> titles and all this stuff like you still have to be connected with your true self, and it's easy to get lost in in the music industry. So I was I'll just put that on the top of the checklist. Are you happy? Good job, Joel. I have one more comment. Sure, no problem. I was gonna say. I mean, uh, there's no doubt how real these people are. <laughs> how real and he can lit are here. What was this? Shonda, please. So it's just a comment, and this we can kind of st- end it with this comment. But Tashima Butler uh, in music production, she just says, These are wonderful tips, and I'm thankful that I was able to attend. I'm feeling so much confident, bu- confidence building after watching this. So that's, that's awesome. Nice. Thank you. Well, thank you, thank you. Tashima. Yeah, that's a perfect, perfect note to end this on. I got to say, I had a blast. I had 
such a good time and reconnecting with people that I haven't seen in a while and that's great and seeing how great they're doing it's inspiring for me as well I hope it is for you guys I'm gonna tell our students uh, this is just one of the panels that we have on spotlight week stay connected check online you know I mean for all the other events right and I want to thank Lid and Enrique for lending their time and being here with us being here with me thank you so much and thank you all of you for attending at home and here, and I'll see you at the Grammys. Yes. Yes.